Hey guys, it's Joshua with Update Channel, and it is the middle of the week, which means it's time for Question of the Week. Now, it's also Groundhog Day, so happy Groundhog Day. And we have a very good question this week that I have selected. And the question is from Lou, and it starts with, Hi Josh, my name is Lou. I'm an owner-operator, owner and I just came across one of your videos on programming cat ECMs. I actually have a couple on those, so I'm not sure which one you watch, but I love your content. You're an amazing teacher. I'm looking for better fuel mileage. I'm wondering if you do ECM tunes yourself. I have an 06 p 379 with a C15 Assert, 475, it's stock with 13 speed, 355 runs, runs great, but have been averaging 3.8 miles per gallon. I drive in the oil fields in North Dakota, so truck doesn't shut off much in the winter either. And a lot of off-road short haul. Nothing heavy, I stay at 80,000 pounds or less, 80,000 pounds, that's a lot of weight if you think about it, but in trucking, that's not super heavy. Would like to get five plus miles per gallon. Reading forums and a lot of guys are doing 550 ECM tune. Would love to speak with you if you do ECM tuning, tuning, and if you do not know a reputable person who does. Thank you and keep rocking YouTube videos. Love it, thanks. Okay, so let's answer that question there. There's a lot loaded in that question. And his primary concern here, it doesn't sound like is to get a lot more power. A lot of guys want more power, but his concern is mileage or fuel economy. Now fuel economy, in my opinion, is more important than horsepower, at least as a truck, which is supposed to be making you money. Now you might be saying 3.8 miles to the gallon, that is horrible mileage. Well, it's a truck, it's a C15, it's in a Peterbilt, so it's not the most efficient chassis design as far as aerodynamics. It's running in very cold conditions. It idles a lot. It's off-road. So a lot of not high speed at all, a lot of stop and go, a lot of hills, not a lot of, you know, the most mileage you're gonna get is lower highway speeds and no stop and go. So he's kind of in the worst conditions there. Now, most engines on highway engines, CAT C15s that I've been around, generally they average five and a half to six and a half, but the spread's like probably five to seven on the extremes, but generally it, it seems like they're five and a half. That seems to be the average, maybe to six. So his mileage is a little pretty low, but he is in tough conditions for getting good mileage. Now he's wondering if a tune will fix that. Now before I discuss tunes and horsepower and stuff, I wanna do a little illustration to show you that his truck, even at 3.8 miles to the gallon, is actually quite efficient in relation to other vehicles. So let's do a little math. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing here is, like I said, we're gonna do a little math. And what I'm going to be doing is showing you that a truck is a lot more efficient than a Prius, a Honda Civic, or even a motorcycle when it comes to moving weight. Now that's not to say that driving a Peterbilt back and forth to work every day would save you money and fuel just to do an illustration. So his truck, he said he runs 80,000 pounds, right? And he gets 3.8 miles to the gallon. We're gonna divide that by 1,000 pounds. It's kind of our, that'll be our basic coefficient. So what we're doing here is seeing how much fuel it takes to move 1,000 pounds, or basically the mile per gallon per 1,000 pounds. 304, what, the, what, is that, what that number means is he goes, he burns one gallon of fuel to move 1,000 pounds, 304 miles. So basically, if his truck weighed 1,000 pounds, he would be getting 304 miles to the gallon. That sounds really good, right? Remember, his truck weighs 80,000 pounds, though. You need to compare that to something to see how efficient it is. So let's pick, let's pick a very standard gasoline car. Uh, let's just say a Honda Civic. So a Honda Civic weighs a four-door one with all the bells and whistles, we're gonna say it weighs about 3,000 pounds, okay? It might be a little less than that, but for the sake of this argument, we're gonna make it get very good mileage though. So we're gonna make it get 40 miles to the gallon. We're then gonna divide that by 1,000 pounds. So that Honda Civic per 1,000 pounds is only going 120 miles. So his truck, even at only 3.8 miles to the gallon, is getting almost triple the mileage. Now, a Honda Civic is not a hybrid or anything special, but it's recognized to be a very efficient vehicle. So how about a Prius? A Prius weighs about 3,000 pounds, but it gets 
about 50 miles to the gallon. We're going to divide that by 1,000 pounds, 150. So even though it's more efficient than a Civic, it's still half as efficient as this truck. Remember, this is per 1,000 pounds. Keep that in mind. Now, what's probably the most fuel efficient, meaning gasoline or diesel burning vehicle that you could think of? Probably a motorcycle, right? It might get 80 miles to the gallon, but it's actually extremely inefficient per unit of mass moved. So if you took, let's say a 500 pound motorcycle, multiply that by 80 miles to the gallon, divide that by 1,000, 40. So his truck is actually eight times more efficient than a motorcycle, at least when it comes to moving mass. So that would mean the thousand pound of motorcycle mass would only go 40 miles. So it's just something to keep in mind. People think big trucks are very inefficient. They're actually extremely efficient for moving mass. They would be extremely inefficient, however, if you were using them just to move yourself around. So let's keep that in mind. Okay, so really digging in the weeds here, that was an interesting mathematical uh, display we had there. So let's answer this guy's question. Can he get better mileage? Maybe. Um, the conditions he's in are horrible for good fuel economy. Just because he's off-road, it's very cold condition, he idles the vehicle a lot, it sounds like. But over the years, people have done re-rates, at least through CAT, and he has a 475 assert engine, a pre-07, so they're better ones. And I've heard people that, hey, let's take it to 550, and they say, hey, my mileage improved slightly, or it didn't affect it at all. Can increasing your horsepower increase your mileage? Well, mathematically speaking, not really, because, of course, to move a certain amount of mass, it takes a certain amount of energy, and the energy is your fuel. Now, the fuel needs lots of air to burn efficiently, and there's lots of things that go into your mileage. A lot of it has to do with the driving speed because the aerodynamic of the vehicle, it's a logarithmic scale. So if you're going 90 miles an hour opposed to 60, it's not like you burn 50% more fuel. You'll probably burn 200% more fuel. So the aerodynamics have a lot to do with it. Your drivetrain, your RPM range, there's a lot to it. But people have said, hey, by re-rating it, let's say from 475 to 550, it might see a slight improvement. Technically speaking, mathematically at least, you should not. Now, I don't believe what he's talking about is a re-rate because CAT, you can easily re-rate it from 475 to 550 with just a flash file. What he's talking about is custom tuning. Now, I have heard of guys, and I'm not one of them, that can go into the ECM and not necessarily with CAT files, but give you more horsepower, and I've heard better fuel efficiency. Now, how would they do that? Basically, they're changing the fuel mapping throughout the RPM range to somehow be more efficient. How do they do that? I'm not exactly sure, but somehow they're getting it to be more efficient, and I don't know how they're doing this. CAD engineers that designed this engine, they made it as efficient as they possibly could at the time. I don't believe they intentionally, them being Caterpillar, made them inefficient, but CAD engines are not known for their efficiency. They're more known for their longevity, their heavy duty nature and the mileage that they get between rebuilds. Generally for efficiency, you would go with a Detroit, which is generally lower in horsepower, don't last as long in general between rebuilds, are cheaper to rebuild though, and they're smaller engines, or what, usually 12.7 liters, right? So can him getting a tune possibly increase his mileage? Maybe, but usually these tunes also increase the RP, or the horsepower way past whatever the factory rating was. So how can you have more horsepower and better fuel economy? Remember your max horsepower is when your foot's in the floor and you're usually about 1800 RPM. It's very rare for your truck to be ran at full load or max RPM and horsepower for very long. Usually you're lower in the RPM range, 14 to 1500, and you're usually not under 100% throttle. So your max horsepower doesn't actually have a lot to do with how efficient your engine is. Mostly, that comes into more play in the middle of the RPM range and in the middle of the load, meaning not at full load, but kind of just normal driving conditions if you're going 70 miles down the freeway, 70 miles per uh, hour down the freeway. So I guess the answer to his question is, he could try a 550 cat tune. I don't think he would see much of a mile per gallon change. He would, if he's really trying to tune it for mileage, I don't know who he would go to for that.
I don't know anyone personally, and it wouldn't be any sort of cat file that you'd be putting in there to try to mess with the horsepower and the mileage that much. But he could try a 550 rating with cat and see what it does. If not, I would be very hesitant to let someone mess with my ECM. They're very expensive, cat ECMs are. And if you have any sort of warranty or anything and cat finds out that you were messing with the file, that could negate a warranty. So just something to think about. Maybe he knows someone, unless it's someone I personally knew that got it and could trust their opinion, I, I wouldn't send my ECM to someone I would program. Well, that is the question of the week. Hope you guys enjoyed it and enjoyed the little math segment we did there. Thanks for watching.